So I'm going to take this hand pushed garden cart and turn it into a DIY tilting trailer to pull behind my lawn tractor. Okay, so what we have here is your typical sort of uh, garden cart, and you saw that I took the front hoop of it off where you pulled on. Originally, I was just gonna make it into a trailer. And then I got to thinking about it, and I thought, well, I'm gonna get a thousand comments of why didn't you make it into a tilting trailer? And then I got to thinking, well, I might use the tilt option at some point. You know, if you got dirt on it or wood chips or straw or whatever, a tilting option might be nice. But it's not something that I really see myself needing. What I need this trailer for is nothing heavy. It's not going to be a hauling. Uh, it's not going to be hauling a lathe to my to my shop. Well, it might haul a lathe, a small lathe. We'll see about that. Uh, but it will need to haul some um, basically uh, parts from my the front of my house to my rear storage Motorcycle parts car parts now. So, you know, 
nothing more than about two or three hundred pounds that would be the maximum weight we're talking about here so i got the wheels off got the axle out that's this you noticed i added a piece to the front that uh, was because there was no framing there in the front and we have it turned upside down so the axle goes between these two bosses right here these two tubes we're gonna connect to that floating with some pipe this will slip over the axle and it'll be on both sides so it'll sit about right in here somewhere those will connect to a piece of angle and like that these pieces are separate from the trailer they're only connected by the axle so far and we got our tongue which will go down the center it like that and then we'll have some triangle bracing here at, but I'll probably use heavier angle iron than this but you get the idea essentially this T shaped piece this piece is separate from the trailer connected to the axle with these little what are going to act like pivots so then the trailer will pivot on its own wheels you may be saying well aren't you pulling on the axle at that point yeah there'll be a little bit of pulling on the axle but most of the pulling will happen in the front and there will be a shackle to hold it from pivoting when you're moving and I haven't designed that shackle yet and I'm sure you know I've seen them a thousand times on other tilting trailers it'll be something simple and it will bind the tongue to the front of the trailer and that's going to take up most of your pulling force this is not a, an on-road trailer this is to move stuff around in my yard you know basically this is going to be stronger than the wire wheels so this is really our limitation of weight is these spindly little wheels tube has a seam in it it's not going to matter for my application because it's not rolling on this tube it's just pivoting on it so no big deal Better find out what they're barking at. Might be important. What are you barking at? So this is Spot. Spot's the middle dog. He was named by my dad because he's got a spot of white on his chest. You can't really see it. He won't let you see it. This is Nora. Nora's got Cushing's disease. She's our oldest. That's why she looks a little thin. But she's a happy girl. I got another one, but he's not out right now. You've seen him in several videos. All right, for angled braces, I originally was just gonna do 45 across here. I'd rather have a little bit more bracing that covers this corner out here. So I think what I'm gonna do is do something about this length, like so. But I think if I do that on each side, with the same heavier angle iron, I think that'll be plenty. Something I was thinking about is that the distance between the front of the tongue and the wheels. Uh, I may end up moving the wheels a little bit farther forward. Having them in the back is nice for stability and, and to a certain extent, uh, maneuverability especially backing up I think it's easier to back up a trailer where the wheels are farther back it's not it doesn't get as squirrely on you but 
the problem is is that in tight spaces the trailer doesn't follow the tractor it it actually in a way cuts the corner sharper than you're expecting um, so that's a consideration I'll just have to use it and see it's very very simple to just move the axle brake the axle uh, hubs farther a little bit farther forward maybe 60 percent of the distance this looks like it's more like 75 percent sort of learned this lesson the hard way about trailers following vehicles or not following vehicles or kind of making their own cut when i was a uh, 18 or 19 I worked at the shop where my dad was a manager it was a truck rental place and um, I was washing trucks and as part of that I moved trucks around the yard I think I worked there a couple weeks and I got I was getting a little bit too comfortable with moving tractor trailers around got a little cocky and uh, turned a trailer into made, made, a, made a turn too sharply and turned a trailer into um, a big garbage truck that was one of their trucks that they rented. This garbage truck just tore a hole in the side of the trailer. Normally that's a big deal but it wouldn't be a huge huge deal because of the way those trailers are constructed you just get some new aluminum riveted it on and and call it a day. I didn't damage the the structure of the trailer at all other than the the box part. Uh, the, those things get damaged all the time and are repaired. But, this particular trailer happened to be what they call a bladder trailer. It had a rubberized bladder on the inside of it that carried a uh, semi-fluid liquid. And I punctured the bladder. And that ended up being, I think it was, I'd have to ask my dad again. My recollection is $20,000 worth of damage. Um, just putting a little gash on the side of a trailer. So. I learned that lesson the hard way, but it's always stuck with me. And yes, I did get fired by my own father, but deservedly so. He didn't really have a choice. And I was so embarrassed, I don't think I really wanted to go back anyway. All right, let's uh, get these w braces welded on, and then I'm going to put uh, some preservative on the back side here before I attach all this together. And of course, we'll paint it. And. Um, I think you'll like the preservative I'm going to use. I make things stick. They're not always perfect looking, but that's about the quality I get most of the time. Kind of a stack of dimes that's been run over by a railroad train. So now I'm just going to treat the bottom, paint the rails, at least on the bottom, actually just the bottom, just so uh, I can turn it over with the wheels on it and then I can get where my shackle is going to be for the front. Okay, what I'm going to use on the wood preservative is some, kind of see it on there, I think maybe this is a fine distillation of Volkswagen used diesel oil, vintage 2010, so it's aged very nicely in there. Ought to smell really nice. And uh, just a little bit of mineral spirits to thin it out. So let's take this off. Oh yeah. That's the good stuff right there. That is the good stuff. Yeah, I know this stuff causes cancer. We'll get it right off my finger there. Yeah, that'll never come off my finger. So we'll pour a little bit in our cup here. I have a feeling a little bit goes a long way, so I'm not really sure of the mixture, but 
I believe it's about 10 to 1. So one part mineral spirits, one part oil. We will find out. So I'm not going to bore you with this whole thing. I think you get the idea. I'll bring you back when it's kind of dryish. Uh, I like the tilt. It's got a good angle. Full angle. I probably could replace this wood, but it's got a little bit more life in it. It's lasted quite a few years. Considering this thing's not quite under cover, it is under under a, a lean to, but it's it still gets weathered. So not, not all that much heavier than it was. So I'll still be able to push it around if I want. Didn't add that much weight to it. Maybe 20, 30 pounds so far. And I think I have a tongue. This is a tongue I salvaged off something. I'm not sure what. I think it's a little big for this. Yeah, it's got a little bit of gap in there. I'd like to, to bolt that on just so I can take it off in the future if I want to do another trailer or... Anyway, we'll figure it out. Okay, so I decided on this tongue that I would... Uh, I'm not going to worry about this gap here because I can't really go in with the bolts that are already here, to, that are already existing because they fall half on the bottom line of the, of the uh, tongue. So, and this is not the way these are normally done, but for this application, I'm just going to put some bolts through the top here, and uh, that'll be plenty. It'll be bolts and heavy washers all the way through the thing, so that'll be plenty. And if it's not, I can always redo it later. But I thought this was going to be a great job for these expanding transfer punches that my, uh, my buddy John Strange sent to me. Okay, so put them in the hole, expand them out, instant transfer punch for any size hole. Absolutely perfect. If you haven't uh, seen my video on these, I've got a video, a uh, mail call video where I talk about these on, on pretty much throughout the whole video. And I'll put a link to uh, that in somewhere around there. So now I'll just enlarge those holes with a 60 degree punch. So the drill will catch them. And then we'll uh, drill our full-size hole. Okay, I think I have a pro uh, plan for the latch here. I'm calling it a latch, it's more like a bracket. So we'll attach this to the tongue, and then I've got two of these that are going to go on either side of the trailer like something like so put a hole through and uh, let's see if that works all right we got this piece all deburred got the hole drilled I went ahead and drilled 9 16 so my pin is a half inch but it's a it's a fat half inch if you will so I'm just gonna do 9 16 so it'll be a, a little loose but that'll be easier to get it in and out so 
I'm just going to go ahead and weld this on, and uh, that'll be my fixed point, and then I can mark the other two spots. So this tack over here pulled this side up. Uh, we're just going to secure it down, put a tack on it. Now, I could drill this on here, but uh, I think it'll be easier if I just mark it and drill it on the drill press. So I'm going to use my adjustable center punch again because I don't have a 9 16 center punch. And this one will just do 9 16 We got a mark on there. This might not work so well. Yeah, I got a mark on there. I got one I can see. All right, so we got this one. Go ahead and do the other one, and then we'll uh, line them up and weld them on. So, I saw that, uh, you know, when I was writing this book, uh, I realized, uh, oh, there wasn't a psychological issue at all. So I've been saving these for just such a project. Now I'm going to do... Use them to line it up. Give myself a little bit of gap. All right, guys, there it is. Should have cleaned the wheels, but they're just gonna get dirty again anyway. Looks pretty good. Might be a little long, that tongue, but I can uh, adjust that if I need, if I feel like I need to. And like I said, I may adjust the wheels farther forward a little bit. We'll see. Of course, you know, as soon as I get finished, it starts to want to rain. I might put a handle up here or something just to make it easier to lift. That would be another nice thing about having the wheels a little farther forward is that the center of weight would be in the back. But honestly, guys, as I said before, I don't really see myself using the dump option all that often. So it wasn't a priority for me. Uh, but I thought, you know, while I'm doing this, why not? So the sides here are just attached at the front. And uh, that's basically how they were before. I like that because they're quick to remove and um, I don't always use them. The back just lifts out. Um, now that it's a trailer, I may want a front, but we'll see how that goes. I think I got enough, I got just a little bit of back lean, I think. Just a little bit. It's actually probably pretty level. It's kind of hard to tell. It's not really level here. The oil that's on there is on the deck is uh, it's I wouldn't say it's dry. It'll still come off if you rub on it quite a bit, but um, it's uh, well, my fingers are already dirty, but I think you get the idea. It's not it's, it doesn't really rub off that much once it soaks into the wood on the sides. I actually modified my uh, formula a little bit to get it to soak in a little bit more. That's maybe uh, eight parts oil to two parts uh, paint thinner instead of uh, 10 to one. I think that uh, soaked in a little bit better. They seem, to, they seem to cover a little better and dry a little faster. You know, that was, it's just kind of an experiment. Um, I know 65 Ford did a video on it not too long ago, I believe. He swears by it, so we'll see. Hitch receiver has already gotten dirty from a couple lawn mowings. I didn't bother cleaning it up. I need to clean the deck of the mower though. That's that's bad form. I shouldn't I should be embarrassed to even show you that. Let's drive it around the yard. <laughs> 